I always like to think that God has a checklist for every single person. And he's looking at the checklist and he goes, damn, I wasn't expecting that. Today, we're going to be talking about how to maximize the one life that you get to live in this episode. And I have a question for you, and I want you to think about this for a second. Uh, have you been living your life as if you get another shot? I want you to think about that for a second. If you look back on everything that you've done the past 20 years, past 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, whatever it is for you, have you been living your life as if this is the only life that you have and there are no other shots? Or have you been living it kind of in the back seat as if, hey, maybe there is another one. Maybe this is just a practice at back. Maybe I'm just, I'm just on deck before I get into the real life. I want you to really honestly think about that for a second. Because I think too many people live their lives as if they happen to get another shot. They sit in the background. They worry too much. They fear too much. They don't take the action that they need to. They see this perfect life that they want to have somewhere in the future, but they act like, uh, maybe one day I'll just get it. Instead of actually waking up every single day and taking the steps needed to get them to where they're going to go. And it's almost as if, it's almost as if everybody lives as if they're just guaranteed tomorrow, as if they are going to 100% wake up tomorrow, as if they're even going to go to bed tonight. Because here's the thing, 150,000 people will not wake up tomorrow. That's just statistics. We're gonna be one of them one day. Hopefully it's long, it takes a lot longer to get there than sooner, but you never know. And there was a great conversation that I saw between Neil deGrasse Tyson where he was talking to Larry King. And Larry King said, if you could live forever, would you? And Larry King was like, yeah, I would, I would love to live forever is what he said. And you know, Larry King looks like as if he was <laughs> kind of like he's been alive forever. But Neil deGrasse Tyson says he wouldn't live forever if he could. And the reason why is because he thinks that death brings urgency to his life. Because if he never died, if he was just you know, completely immortal, there would always be tomorrow. So why would you get up and actually do something with your life if you're guaranteed tomorrow either way? And so think about that. The fact that you're going to die should bring more urgency to your life. And I say it, I probably think about death five, 10 times a day. You know, and people are like, that's kind of weird to think about that much. I'm like, I don't think that it is because I think about it knowing that eventually I'm going to get there and I want to make sure by the time I'm there, I'm like, yeah, I did everything that I possibly could. And so if you think back up your, up your entire life up until this very moment, ask yourself that question. Have you been living your life as if you get another shot? As if this is just some practice at bat? Because you might not wake up tomorrow and I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, morbid in any sort of way. I'm just trying to be honest and make you realize we should be thinking about this because it should bring more urgency. It should make us want to live more of a fulfilled life. The worst thing, my, they always say that the only thing worse than the pain of hard work is the pain of regret. The only thing that I'm truly afraid of is getting to my deathbed and being like, oh, I could have done more. I could have done more for myself, for people around me, for the world, it could have made more impact, but I was too worried about what people would think about me. I was too lazy most of the days. I was too busy scrolling through Instagram. I was too busy scrolling through Facebook and, and thinking about all the things that I could have done but never did because I was too caught up doing other things or thinking about other things. And I want you to think about this. If you knew that today, today, if I told you right now, today was your last day, what would you have missed out on? If today was your last day, if you literally had that message, you knew, knew that today was your absolute last day, what would you have missed out on? What chances didn't you take? What places didn't you travel to? What people's lives didn't you impact? Who did you not donate to or volunteer to that you always wanted to? What were you not able to give your loved one that you've always wanted to give them? Think about that for a second. If you found out that today was your very last day, what would you have missed out on? in your life? What would you regret that you could have done, but you didn't do? And here's the thing. Think about it this way. If you were to rate on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like absolutely terrible, the worst ever, 10 being the best that's ever lived, the best life that anyone's ever lived on a scale of one to 10, what would you rate your life and how much you've gotten out of your life and all of the things that you've done for yourself, for other people, what would you rate yourself one to 10 up until this very moment of your life? What would it be? Usually when I ask this question, when I'm giving speeches, most people say six, 6.5, seven. 
And I say, what I want you to do is I want you to think about your life as if it was a grade. So, you know, here, if you rate yourself a seven, that's 70%, seven out of 10, 70%, you basically rated yourself a C. If you gave a grade to your life, it was a C. If you said 6.5, that's 65% out of 100. That's a D. If you rate yourself 60 or below, 59 or below, that's an F. Let that sink in for a second. If you were to grade your life, was it an A? Was it a B? Was it a C? Was it a D? Or was it an F? Now, once again, I don't say to suppress you. I say this to wake you up, to realize it's not over yet. You can make a change at any moment in your time in your life, whenever you want to. You know, when you look back, what what risks haven't you take taken? What what things haven't you done that you've always wanted to do? What places haven't you traveled to? What have you been holding back because you're in fear of of failure, fear of success, fear of people judging you, fear of what your parents might say, what your family might say, what people on Facebook that you haven't seen in 17 years might say. And then what can you go, you know what, I need to release that, I need to do what I really truly want to do. Have you been too worried about what other people think of you? Have you been too worried about what could possibly happen to you for you to step out into the unknown? Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. You know, I, I always think about it this way and it doesn't matter whether you believe in heaven, hell, God, no, no God, whatever it is, just go along with me on this journey. I always like to think that God has a checklist for every single person and that checklist is like the absolute best that that person could do, like the best life. And as you're going through, he's either checking them off as he's watching your life, he's checking them, checking them, check, oh, you missed that one. Nope, that one's not there. You missed that one. Oh, no big deal. All right, that one, you got a checklist. You have this checklist of everything. Like, if you were to check off every single box, that is the life most fully lived, like the most fully lived life that you personally could possibly have. And everybody has a different checklist. It's all based on, okay, you were born into this. This is the life that you're going to have. These are the parents that you're going to have. These are the struggles that you're going to have. And this is the life that you're going to have. And you have individual checklists. And my job is that if this whole thing called heaven exists and I go to it one day that I'm sitting there with, with God and he's looking at the checklist and he goes, damn, I wasn't expecting that. You pretty much checked off everything. You even got flips it over on the back and goes, man, you've even got some stuff checked off that I didn't even think you were going to check off. Like that is my goal. And that's the thing that I'm trying to work for because in this mind, in my mind, I have like this perfect vision of what I could possibly be, right? Like this person, this, this best version of me. And I want you to think of that as well. Like, what is the best version of you look like? The best version of your life, of everything. Like, if you were not afraid of anything, if you were fully going into it, if you were not held back mentally, physically, emotionally, any of those things, if there was the perfect version of you, and that perfect version of you went through and lived your life, what could that life possibly look like? Right? And, and the whole thing is, I like to think of that perfect version of me and when we die, we get to see that version of ourself and what we could have been, the things that we could have done, all of the, the chances we could have taken, the place we could have traveled to, the lives we could have impacted, the businesses we could have built, the money we could have made, the fun we could have had, the laughs we could have had, and all of, that's the perfect version. When you die, you get to look at this person. You get to see what you could have been. My goal is that when I do die and I get to see that version of me, I'm staring at my twin. We're the same person. We've done everything we possibly could. We've maximized the life that we possibly could. Once again, the only thing worse than pain of hard work is the pain of regret. It would be terrible to die, to meet that version of you and go, oh my God, I could have been that, but I was just this. I could have been that. I could have done that. I could have seen that. I could have experienced that. I could have seen it with my eyes and felt it with my hands and tasted it. And that, that could have been my life, but instead, I sat back and I didn't do it because I was too worried and I was too crippled by worry. I was too crippled by fear. I was too busy thinking about other people's opinions and what other people would think of me. I was too busy worried about what would happen if I went and did this and what that person would think of me and would my spouse break up with me and would my children resent me or would my parents get pissed off if I broke off and did this and went this way. We get caught up in these, these mind games that don't even truly matter. 
because you're supposed to be the best version of yourself. And we think sometimes that if we become this best version of ourselves, we're just going to have to, we're, like everyone in our life is going to hate us. They're all going to just resent us. They're going to leave us behind and be like, oh, they outgrew me. But in reality, that's not what happens. The better that you become, the better that everybody in your sphere of influence becomes. That's why it's called the sphere of influence, because you literally influence everyone in your sphere. So as you get better, everybody else around you gets better. When you're inside of the harbor, when the tide rises, all of the boats rise with it. You're like the tide. The more that you become, the better that you become, you raise everybody else around you as well. So don't just think about how you're not impacting just yourself and creating the life that you want, but now you can start thinking about all of the people around you who you love and how if they're not getting the best version of you, then they're not going to become the best version of themselves. Because ultimately, you get one shot for the best that we know. What are you going to do from now on to change it? Because you might be sad at this moment thinking, oh my gosh, there's so many things that I could have done. Well, you're not dead yet. That's the best thing. 365 days from today, you could be in a completely different position than you are right now if you really buckle down and focus on creating the life that you want. If you focus on impacting others, you focus on building the business, focus on helping other people. If you focus on whatever it is, creating the mind, body, spirit, soul, emotions that you've always wanted to, you can be in a completely different place in your mind, in your body, in your bank account, in your business, all of those things can be in a completely different place. Your family can be in a completely different place. All of those can be different, but it takes you making the decision to go, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to stop making excuses. I'm going to stop living my life in fear. I'm going to stop worrying about all of the crap that actually truly doesn't even matter because the only thing that matters is me making me the best version of myself so I can go out and bring you the best version of everybody else out of themselves because you can be in a different place financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and your family, everything can be in a completely different place 365 days from today. But you have to make the decision that today is going to be different than any other day ever has been. And you don't, here's a beautiful thing. You don't have to worry about the rest of your life at all. You don't have to worry about the next 365 days. All you've got to worry about is today, the perfect version of today. What can you do to maximize today that so by the time you go to bed and you lay your head down, you're like, yep, I did everything that I could. And then you do the exact same thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And you wake up one day, 365 days from today, two years from today, five years from today. And you're like, holy crap, look at what I've actually built. Will Smith used to say when he was younger, his dad made him build a wall. Him and his brother, they made him build a wall. And uh, it took him, it was something like a year, two years, whatever it was to build this wall because they had to take bricks and lay down every single brick. And when they first started it, they first started to build this wall, him and his brother were like, this is impossible. There's no way we're going to be able to build this wall. They're like 10, 11, 12 years old. And his dad says, don't worry about the entire wall. Just worry about laying each brick as perfect as you could possibly lay a brick. And then go to the next brick and lay each brick the perfect, like the most perfect lay that you could possibly have of this brick. And do it with the next one and the next one and the next one. And eventually you have this big, beautiful wall that you've built. It might take some time, but you've built it. But you can only, lay, you can only actually build a wall one brick at a time. Your life is the exact same thing. You can't build the entire wall, the entire life right now. The only thing you could do is lay each brick the most perfect that you possibly can each day. So you put down the brick, you lay it as perfectly as you possibly can, that's today. You go to tomorrow, you lay that brick the perfect way that you possibly can, that's tomorrow. And then you look back and if you lay each brick, aka each day as perfect as you possibly can, you maximize every single day, every single day, you look back a year, two years, three years, five years, and you're like, wow, I just built the most perfect version of that wall, AKA my life that I possibly could because I didn't worry about the next 365 days. I didn't worry about the rest of my life. I didn't worry about what people said about me. I didn't worry about people's opinions of me. I didn't worry about what they think. I didn't worry about success. I didn't worry about failure. All I worried about was taking each day, each brick and getting the most out of it and laying it perfectly as I possibly could. Because if you do that, one day you'll wake up and you'll realize that you've built the perfect version of your life that you've always wanted to. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Some parents live vicariously through their children. It could be around your body, beliefs around money, religion, to go to college, who to marry, when to marry. We're basically living somebody else's life. 